This is the DMT One to One show on the 21st of November 2013, an interview with the founder of Evergig, Arthur Degas. Hello everyone, uh, it's uh, great to be here on the DMT One to One show today with uh, Arthur Dagar, uh, who is a co-founder and CEO from Evergig. Uh, so hi Arthur and uh, great to have you on, how's it going? Hi, pretty fine on you. It's great, thanks. Uh, all going really well. So uh, it's awesome to have you on the show. Uh, I've uh, found out about the company a few months ago, so it's great to have you finally on. And so uh, first up, let's talk about uh, the uh, <laughs> basics. Funny. What is Evergig in a nutshell? Well, the company is just, we're creating um, a full-length video with um, the footage from people uh, with the HD sound. So that means that the uh, record level send us the HD sound from a gig, and yeah. people that shoot with their phone or cameras at a gig, that just uh, upload the content on our website or through our um, iPhone app. And, uh, and then we have uh, an entire boot, but uh, it's mainly an artificial, an artificial intelligence that creates the video to analyze um, the face, the crowd, um, if it's a full body, everything, what happens on the picture, and then we, we choose, it, it chooses the best part of it and it creates a, a full video. Essentially, the process is uh, the audience takes a bunch of videos uh, from the gig and uh, uh, then uploads those videos to your site, and then you match that to the audio that you record at the gig. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Mainly, yes. We just did not record ourselves uh, every show uh, because we, we, as I said, we're just a, a web service. Yeah. But uh, record levels and, uh, and the artists by themselves can record their show. Uh, it's pretty simple. We just ask for um, the sound uh, that comes direct from the engineer desk, the board. And uh, sometimes an ambient mic is good. And uh, they just provide us with those sound, uh, I mean, those files. And um, just even a plain MP3 is enough, and uh, it goes through our system, and we create, as you said, an entire show um, with with this MP3 and uh, and all the videos. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so tell me more about how the company uh, started out. Of course, uh, uh, when did you uh, have the idea for Evergig, and how did it start, uh, uh, you know, moving in terms of uh, you know creating the company? Well, in fact, it's the idea started four years ago. I was at a concert with a friend, and uh, well, I went there for her, and uh, the artist wasn't my my style of music, so I was watching a lot of the crowd, how they react, and uh, it happened that at one moment, um, all the lights turned turn off, and uh, I saw everybody were shooting with their phone. And at that time, if you remember, there were no iPhone five, neither uh, Samsung. It was only uh, Blackberries and you know, iPhone free, free G or stuff like this. Yeah. And uh, I was I was asking myself, what about the quality? What 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 it looks like? How does it sound? And uh, where does people share those videos? Because why do they keep shooting if it's not for sharing? Yeah. And I discovered three things. The first is the quality wasn't so bad, and um, the second thing is the audio quality was really poor, and uh, the third thing, is, yes, they are sharing, not everyone like. 20% of them are sharing their footage and um, the other parts were not sharing because of the quality of the sound yeah. or quality of the video. And, uh, and, and, and those who share just spray uh, all their video on, on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. And, uh, but so you have, if you, if you are a big fan of Arcade Fire, for example, you go and you type Arcade Fire gig or concert on YouTube and you have hundreds of videos, but none are, um, don't have the great sound, none are a full song. It's it's just one view from one guy and you have to, to watch five or ten of them uh, in order to, to create in your in your in your mind uh, the video that you want. Yeah. And um, so we thought about that and, and, and the second thought is there is there is already people who are shooting um, professional who are shooting shows. So is that is that a good tool because people are shooting with their phone. It's 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 really bad quality comparing to uh, a, a read a red sorry or a canon 5d um but uh, we discovered something is that people just want to have a piece of souvenir and they want to share it they want to say hey i was there this is my footage and yeah. with all other fans we contribute to do something and um and, and that was the main the really main uh, subject of all um so we start to do some research about how can we 
do um, an artificial intelligence that could create the final editing. Yeah. And it took almost two years. And uh, when we almost finished, we decided to start the company. And just before to start, we, we went to uh, some major record level like Warner and Sony and Universal and asked them, would you, would you use our system? I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not a pirate system. It's more like we all create something like you provide us the sound and the fan provide us um, the, the footage and we just generate the content. And it's, it's, well, the industry, the music industry has changed a little bit and they are more uh, open to see what we can do with new technology. So they say, yes, let's do it. And we tried with some, some major French artists and uh, it, it worked pretty well. So um, we decided to create the company. Uh, the 21 June, 21st June, June 21st, and in fact it was the um, the music day in France. Right. So it uh, was pretty funny. And just one year yeah. after, uh, we um, w we won one million euro from two um, investors. That's so great. we were pretty happy. That's one, awesome. One yeah. That's fantastic. And so, yeah, the, the, the round uh, of funding is uh, led by uh, Partech Entrepreneur and uh, uh, 360 Capital Partners. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's always, uh, you know, we always uh, hear people talk about how it's difficult to raise money for uh, music startups these days. And uh, so how, how do you define that process? And uh, uh, do you define support in France as well uh, as a company in France uh, that, that is starting out? Yeah, in fact, it, it was not really, um, I won't say it wasn't hard. It, it wasn't <laughs> yeah, hard. It, it was really hard, and uh, it, it took us well. It took us between um, six and nine months to raise money. Uh, just almost making, just doing that all the time, uh, which was pretty boring because at that time we were not focusing on, on new product or even new artists and just you know raising money, raising money, raising yeah. money. And uh, but we knew something that it, it's not. We're not only focusing on music. I mean. We are our, our ever gig and we are uh, dedicated to music concert, but our technology is, is, is allowed to do way more than just music, like football game or uh, our weddings videos or whatever, because it's what all of our technology is creating uh, a story directly from, from UGC videos. Yeah. So it's, it's truly I mean how uh, that we have the ability to change how people um, exchange video. Right now, they exchange picture uh, through Instagram, Facebook, um, whatever other system. It, it takes a fraction of a second to watch many uh, picture, but it, it takes a lot of minutes every day to watch videos. And who has 30 minutes to spend on watching your um, your 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 um, your nephew? Uh, a football game or um you know last thursday friends you were uh, last saturday so it's, it's you don't have 35 minutes to watch that and uh, yeah in fact so how about technology allows to do more than music and, and big concerts um it's it allows to just tell a story like for example uh, if you were at thursday and all your all your friends send videos and shoot videos with their phone um uh, you don't well nobody has 30 minutes on his day to watch five videos of six minutes long each one. You just want to watch three minutes with the best of the best from, from, yeah. from your birthday. And that's what our technology um, can do. And we are hardly working on that. But so our technology, our investors are interested on, on this part, but also on the other parts, uh, like, um, like, for example, the, um, the fact that 21% of the music category on YouTube is uh, only UGCs from, from shoot at concerts. So there are, there is already a market yeah. which is all between 4 and 6% of the entire YouTube video. It's it's huge amount of video and no one cares about it. Uh, all the record level major, they just look it like it's dust. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and uh, the artists, they don't care about it because it's not good quality for them, what yeah. they quali qualify as good quality. But the fan, they are really engaged by that. They are, yeah. they are, they are shooting, they are streaming. It's, it's, it's a link, it's an emotional link between them and the artist. It's also an emotional link between all of them. They all do something. Different. And so that's why we start with the music. We thought that uh, we could have, uh, we can create all together. Um, what I mean all together, it's the record level and the fan. 
um, and also the artist for sure. Um, yeah. A great, a great tool that could easily uh, um, be more like the new web. What what all people to do? I mean, um, yeah, and it's interesting as well because uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people talking about uh, live streaming and the future of li of live music. Whether people are going to start enjoying concerts more from their couch. Uh, and I like the you know the, you, you, from from your perspective, from what I can see, uh, yours is more the idea of sharing uh, the vid the videos of an experience you're having, uh, you know, in a live context to other people that you just want to make sure that they you know that they enjoy that as well and 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 sort of compile those experiences together instead of just offering a live stream of a video in somebody's house, right? Well, naturally, uh, it's, it's both of them uh, uh, because you know. For, for what it is, a concert is someone who, which takes place, something who takes place in a special place yeah. uh, with people. I mean, even if it's a huge stadium, it's two people comparing to the audience you have on the internet. Yeah. So there is always people who cannot be there because, well, they are not living near the place or they, they could not afford a ticket or whatever. And, um, or maybe they were at that concert and yeah. they are not, uh, and they want a piece of souvenir. And that's what really we discover with Evergig. It's not that, um, we are not competing with others, um, professional producer, like, you know, there is postcard and you have also your own, uh, photo picture from your vacation. Yeah. But you can only buy a postcard. No, you take some postcard and you also take pictures directly uh, with your cameras. It's exactly the same concert. You have the professional one and you also have the souvenir part of the, uh, the emotional link that you want to have. So you want to share it directly because it's, it's what internet is. You want to share your emotion. You also want to show, show, show off a little bit like I was there. Yeah, and uh, and the other fact is um, there is also some um, some kind of um, generosity because some of, some of our gisters they just shoot for the others, the other fans who are not at that show, and that's really great. Yeah, and let's talk about the user experience. So, when um, how do do artists make fans aware that this is happening, and uh, what's you know wh what have you found is the best way to get the word across that? fans can go on your website and sign up and upload their videos because that's that's the most important part, right? Yeah, sure. Um, well, the user experience is uh, the, uh, how people get involved and, and know everything. It's pretty simple. Um, as we are legal and working with artists and record level, we ask them to communicate about the operation. Right. The mission they have is, is really simple. They just shoot themselves uh, with um, with their phone, their iPhone or Samsung or whatever, and then they just have to uh, um, directly post it on their Facebook or, or Twitter account, and usually the video say, hey, uh, next gig I will be, uh, it will be an ever gig show, so bring your camera and, 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 uh, and, uh, and um, your phone, you will be allowed to shoot, and don't forget to uh, upload everything on everygeek.com. Yeah. And then usually uh, they push new information about that just after the show on their Twitter, Facebook, and even on radio sometimes or on TV. And yeah. then we receive a lot of videos, and with those videos, we just create the, um, the full concerts or part of the concert is really depends. And uh, it, it, sometimes it's, it's really fast. It's 12 hours and sometimes it's, it's a bit longer and it's take, you know, four or five days. It really depends of the, uh, of the, uh, the, the people who are engaged with that artist right. and how people, how fans want to uh, participate and create something all together. Yeah, sure. And so uh, finally, I wanted to ask about uh, monetization. So of course, uh, you see yourself, uh, as I can understand, uh, more of as a technology uh, enabler for for the content industry uh, to create uh, higher quality videos and engage fans uh, uh, as well in, in that way uh, but how do you feel about the way uh, you know there's a lot of debates that i'm hearing and i've been part of uh, talking about monetization of music videos online uh, do you feel that there are, you know there are potential new avenues that can open up on that front uh, aside from uh, the established uh, youtube uh, uh, phenomenon in terms of uh, advertising and monetization yeah well uh to our point of view, YouTube is not uh, a competitor anymore yeah. to anyone. It's just you know, it's like um, it's like hair hair 
you know, it's like just broadcasting content. Yeah. You have to be on YouTube, whatever you decide. It's not, it's not, you cannot fight against YouTube. You are, you have your own brand on your, on your own website. And you also have your YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, it's like it's like know. saying I don't want to be on Google. It's the same. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, yeah. It's it's like I don't want to. I don't want to have her, um, you know, hair hair stream TV. Like, yeah. How, how do you get user if you don't on, if you're not on hair stream TV? It's very strange. So it's it's the same right now. YouTube is not a competitor anymore. They're not producing anything. I mean, they yeah. have their music show every year, but it's it's just kind of celebration. Yeah, and. Um, so there is YouTube on one side and we have our channel. We also have a channel on Dailymotion yeah. and uh, we will have a, a lot of new content uh, next week uh, on those two channels. But uh, our, our um, main website is not about, um, how you say it? Um, Monetizing. Yeah, monetize, mon our, our goal is just, you know, Firstly, having users and uh, an artist who want to participate, then I'm, I'm pretty sure there is um, a bunch of place for other stuff except YouTube and, and Vevo. And Vevo is a good example because, you know, uh, in the music industry before, um, there were this kind of payola system, you know, um, Clear Channel has all radio and uh, record level has to pay a lot of promotion um, to, to promote their, their song to a Clear Channel radio station and then and turn it into, and it just makes everything upside down. And, uh, and, and they just realized that I mean, when I say that, I mean, the music industry would like that they could change that. Maybe they have a chance to not be um, um, kind of slave for the radio or the big conglomerate and they can create their own. And that's mainly what they decide to do um, with, with Vevo. They just yeah. decide to have their own tools so they can push their own content in front of everything. And, and, I'm, and that's pretty great for them. Um, but we also here to uh, have another voice, something different because it's it's free for the artist, it's free for the record level, it's also free um, for everyone. So what I mean is, if you want to go to Vivo, you definitely have to, uh, you definitely have to, uh, you know, have your own video clip and yeah. being a major artist or sign on a big, you know, a really big. Um, record level you know if you go to every gig you can just call your friends and call your fans to shoot your show and yeah. send us the hd sound and then we create your show so if you're a small artist or a big one like rihanna you can be on every gig it's not owned by um, a huge um, conglomerate of record levels or advertisers so there is place for that because this is what internet is yeah. it's somewhere in somewhere between big one and small one and as our service is free how we get how we monetize it it's we had um we had um publicity video advertising before and during the content exactly when you watch your tv yeah and uh we also maybe by the end of um of um let's say around september um 14th at uh vod is vod service but we're working on it because it's 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 pretty complicated regarding yeah. the um, the record levels, but sure. they really definitely want to do that because of the success of, of Deezer or Spotify or radio. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure it's a really good idea. We have a lot, a lot of demon of hardcore fans that ask us, where can I download it? And I start with so that they want to steal our content, but absolutely not. <laughs> they were willing to pay something. Yeah to have the DVD or the uh, the files on their computer offline because they want to listen it on the subway or on the train or whatever. And um, so that's pretty a good thing that's for us. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other, uh, so one is advertising and content. Second is uh, a future VOD is VOD service. And the third is that a lot of brands are asking um, to do something with us, yeah. uh, like because our player is, is, is available and proprietary so we can customize it and push you know a special button like this this gig is offered by and you put your name you want and so on um, it's 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 great it's really great for brands because the content is directly made by people so it's it's instantly vir viral yeah in kind of way
Sure. And uh, finally, so let's talk about uh, the direction of the company. Of course, you've had uh, just announced the, the round uh, of a million euros uh, last month. And so what are your plans for the next uh, year? Uh, are you going to focus on, on product? Are you going to focus on international expansion? Uh, what, what's your, the key point of your roadmap? Yeah, oh, years is a, <laughs> it's a long it's a term. Long time, yeah. <laughs> it's month to month. Uh, yeah. Right now, we are we were focused uh, since uh, this summer um, to release new website because the actual website was just technology proof in order to raise money. There were almost no social interaction, um, and, and it was kind of painful to upload. And that's why we love our gigsters. They just keep going and, and keep uploading content even if sometimes there were bugs. The yeah. new one will be just great, and we release it this week. Awesome. And uh, so that's that's pretty good news for us. New website. Um, it's it's more. Uh, we push the content we want in front of the others. Uh, we also um, push title instead of the entire show because you're a hardcore fan and you want to sh share it. So mainly you share with other hardcore fan. But at one point you want just to share it with some fans, and then fans just want to share it with the regular audience. And the regular audience, they don't want to have the full um, the full show. They just want to go directly to the right song that they heard on radio or, or the one who were who is in in their iPhone. Yeah. So we were we were working on that uh, for the past month. That's great. And uh, now we're working more uh, with brands and also to have better content. Yeah. For sure, some uh, um, some still in France, but we you know, we have more and more demand from the US because. We spend a little bit more time there, and uh, and also because the main uh, major artists are from the US uh, right now, <laughs> so uh, that's why we spend a lot of time there. So it's it's not really um, going internationally, but the new website will be in English and French, and um, we hope in in span in Spanish in in few weeks or month, and uh, maybe in in Korean or Japanese too. So we try to to go out around and uh, and see if you know some just artists might participate without being um, physically there of course of course that's that's fantastic uh, well uh, the website is evergig.com so i would uh, suggest the uh, listeners to go and check it out uh, and uh, yeah it's, it's it's a great idea thank you so much arthur for uh, joining me today Thank you. And thanks so much for listening to the DMT One to One show. You can find that on digitalmusictrans.com or you can also find our weekly news show. You can follow us on at Digimusictrans or email on contact at digitalmusictrans.com. Have a great week and till next time. Thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show and remember to check out digitalmusictrans.com for our weekly news show.